Use me tonight. Have your way in Jesus' mighty name. Late this morning, I was in my house alone. When you got five people in your house, that's very rare. Hallelujah. So, but I was alone, and I thought, well, I might as well get my sermon started. My greatest joy is to sit in a recliner to get a sermon. I don't know what it is. There's something about that anointed recliner. Hallelujah. I mean, I just seem like I have a wall everywhere else, and I go sit in that recliner five minutes, and it's like, oh, there it is. Hallelujah. Some of you don't be thinking too hard on that. But God told me, he said, I want you to talk a little bit about faith tonight. But he said, not traditional understanding of just faith. But we're going to talk about the enemies of faith. I don't know about you, but there has been a time of testing, and trials, throughout the ministry, throughout the church, throughout the body of Christ over the past many years, and it's been unreal. And some of you are tired. How many are sick and tired of being sick and tired? Come on, if you don't have a hand, raise somebody next to you. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but the test has been extreme. The, the battles have been extreme. The things we've gone through has just been like, can, are, can another thing even happen? Hallelujah. And some of it just makes you go, huh. It's just the most unusual things. And, and it's just one thing after another and after another. And after a while, it takes a toll on your faith. Some of you might say, oh, I got faith. But some of you, because of the recent battles, your faith is not the way it used to be. Now you believe with a question mark. God's going to come through, question mark. Come on. Come on, that's the way we are. Some, after you've been battled and tested and ran through the ringer, come on. You get to the place to where everything is a question mark. I know he's going to break through in this situation, question mark. Yeah, come on, somebody's finally getting real here. Hallelujah, we don't have a bunch of liars in the house. If this was a religious church, they'd be like, oh, how dare you, brother. <laughs> Let's move on, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The greatest enemy of faith is so subtle. And it's most devastating. Because... Sometimes all it is is a lack of knowledge of the Word of God. A lot of people say, oh, I know the Word of God, but a lot of people don't read the Word of God. Some people know the Word of God because it's the Word of God that was preached to them. But how many know you've got to know the Word of God, not just what was preached to you, but know the Word of God because you know the Word of God. And some of you understood that. The rest of you are still going, I was stuck on point A. Come on. But a lot of us believe the devil. Oh, this is going to mess with religion. If you got religion tonight, it ain't going to fit. We believe the devil. Come on. Sometimes you're in agreement with the devil. Come on. Some of you need to fasten your seatbelts. You can leave now. Or you can just stay and find out what happens. See... It is God that is putting you, sometimes because this is what the devil says, God is putting you through this. And sometimes we get to the place we believe it. I've even had Christian people tell me, God's putting you through it, brother. You're going through that physical battle because God's putting you through it. Well, praise God, then why in the world am I serving him? I don't know about you, but that doesn't fit with the manual. But it will kill your faith. Come on. If you're to have faith in God and find out he's the one putting you through it, it's like, come on now. But we believe. And some of you here tonight, you're saying, oh, I never believe that. But in some areas of your life, you are believing and agreeing to an extent because if you battle something long enough, 
You go through something, a situation that seems impossible long enough. If you have to juggle your bills long enough, Come on, if you're going to take enough pain pills to where your insides get raw and you can't hardly go to the bathroom anymore, it gets you to a place to where you begin to doubt. And it's through religious tradition that Satan has blinded the minds of Christians. The Bible says that Satan had desired to sift you. (laughs) <laughs> James 1, 2, I'm just going to refer to it. You can write it down if you want. Count it all joy that when you fall into diverse temptations. See, I like to tear the word apart. I don't just read it. It's like, what's that there for? What, what's there for, there for? <laughs> he said, when you fall into temptations. Not when you walk into them with open eyes. See, some people aren't tempted. They just walk into it. (laughs) Oh, come on. It's very quiet in here. Am I in the wrong house? Come on, there's a church down the street somewhere. Hallelujah. Not on Saturday night, my bad. Hallelujah. Praise God. It might be somebody cleaning it. Hallelujah, I can go preach to that one. Don't take that too wrong. But some folks have walked into them, the temptations, with their eyes wide open. I love when people say, I don't know how this happened. Usually we know exactly how it happened. Come on. I mean, if you see the big cookie on the table and in the middle of the night you go eat that big cookie, you're not going to come to us tomorrow morning and say, I don't know how it happened. Now, in your, in your vision, you saw the big cookie and you went and you ate the big cookie. We actually do have a big cookie on the table, so I'm setting her up to think about it for the next couple hours. See, this verse is often misquoted as this. The trying of your faith, I want you to hear this. I I don't believe I forgot to put the verse in here, but we're just going to quote it anyway. The trying of your faith perfects it. But the word of God says the trying of your faith works patience. Mm. Come on, somebody, that was like a left hook. I mean, that was like Rocky Balboa, come on. Come on, and, and rock, you know, against the Russian. I mean, that was like, oh, come on now. He was a lot stronger than I thought. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on. At least the guys know what I'm talking about. Women are probably like, oh, whatever. <laughs> See, patience is a spiritual force that will support your faith like a pier under a bridge. Satan tries that which you call faith to see if it's true faith. Satan will try you. Let's see if they can take it. Come on, let's see if they can make it. The force of patience, I hate that word by the way, patience. Come on. It's hard to have patience. Come on. After a while, you got to honk the horn to get people to come out. Hallelujah. <laughs> come on. Patience is rough. But the force of patience will undergird your faith and cause you to be constant. Holding the same confession through any trial Satan brings. Patience will support faith because it'll get you to the place that no matter what, you'll stand. (laughs) 
And some of you right now, you're going through one of the longest waits of your life. And patience is a bad word. Come on. It's hard to be patient sometimes when they send you the pink bills in the mail. Come on, some of you might not know what those are, but those are the ones where they say, we will disconnect you. <laughs> and when your phone starts ringing with the 800 number on the other end. When your body aches and you go to the doctor and they tell you nothing's wrong with you. Or you go to the doctor and they tell you everything's wrong with you, but we're still not doing anything. Here's a revelation. Some of you don't need this, but I, I think it's a revelation. Satan is out to destroy your faith. Come on, he wants to destroy your faith. Why? Because if you give up, he's got you. If you give up, it affects you and it affects your children. It affects every person you come in contact with. If it gets you for a moment, even the family that doesn't believe that you're even right will be affected in that. Because they'll be like, see, I told you. <laughs> see, Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 and 13, think it not strange. That just sounded like the Vincent household right there. Concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. Uh huh. I agree. Yep. But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings. It's not, str <laughs> it's not strange that things happen. We should not think it strange when things happen. Strange things even happen. How many have ever had one of those weeks where everything goes wrong? And you just feel like, I need to go back to bed. Come on. Listen to this. I hope you get this because I got it today. And if I got it, you need to get it because when I got it, it was good. <laughs> Satan is not out to perfect your faith. If the trying of your faith perfected it, <laughs> we'd all have it made. Come on, if the trying of your faith perfected your faith, we'd all have it made. We'd be like, man, I got this down. I've been tried for years. Come on, when the gray hairs start popping and, and you know, all this stuff starts happening and, and sometimes you get off the couch and it clunk, clunk in your body, you, you go, oh, but I have been through so much. See, our, pay, our faith would actually be perfect. I don't know anyone who has had... Uh, ha who hasn't had plenty of tests and trials. And if anybody who goes to church says, I never have anything I go through, then they're going the wrong way. Come on. They might as well just be go ahead and cash out. Hallelujah, it's over. I'm serious. I'm not joking about that. Come on, religion will get you to the comfort of no trial. Because you're going the wrong way with the headlights off. Some of them think they're going to be at the end of the Mr. Freeze ride. Instead, they're going to be in the Mr. Hot Fries. Some of you don't get that. We'll just move on. Now, I'll admit, if you win out with your faith, You'll be stronger. When you win, you are stronger. And some of you, you've had victories, but in the midst of the biggest battles, you forget those victories. God's already provided for you before when you had less. But we forget about that when you're going through it. 
You've already had the wrong person in your life. You've already had this situation. You've had health issues that should have killed you. But yet you're standing here healed by the power of God. So why in the world of those former victories, the present battle, you're losing? If you put your faith in action through a word or through the word of God, you'll come out with a determination to not let Satan win another battle. Tonight I want to get us to the place of having faith that is perfect faith. The sense of no matter what comes against you, it bounces off of you. I know it's going to be fine. I know it's going to be okay. And what's funny is some of you, you can preach it to somebody else. Come on, when you go down for a minute, you're like, oh, what? But when somebody else is going through, you're looking at them going, all you got to do is believe. Come on, Laura, what's your problem? I don't know what you're doing. You've been through worse. I've seen you so low, you didn't even know who you were. But when it's us, we're in our bed crying, eating big donuts in the afternoon. And then we're complaining there's crumbs in the bed. Throwing all the sheets off, doing a load. And then when you go to the load, it's out of detergent. Come on, I'm just being real. That's about the situation. See, Satan designed trials in your life to put you under. He didn't design it to put you over. But you can actually take what was meant to destroy you, what was meant to drown you, what was meant to cause you to fall, to take hold of it. It might not be coming in the exact time I want it. It might not come in the exact package I want it. I might need $2,000 today. But guess what? God might wait five days to give it to me. But whatever. He might even wait a month. He might wait till the collector comes to the door. See, that's not what Satan designed it to be. Trials, I want you to get this, you need to get this, are a design of Satan. Why? Because if you believe that God sends trials, that will blow your faith up. Come on. Think about it. We'll get to you in a minute. See, if God is doing it, Certainly, you don't want to resist God. God put me in the hospital. Well, I guess I just need to stay here. Some people believe God makes them sick. I'm a believer. See, if it's God's will for you to be sick, why ever go to the doctor? When you be conflicting God? Come on. If God made you sick or wanted you to be sick and you go to the doctor, you're going against God. I'm going to take this pill so I don't have that. And if God put it on you, you shouldn't take the pill. Just so you know, I don't believe God put it on you. Bible says, 3 John 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. See, God wants you healed. And he will 
Go any way you choose to be healed. He will use a doctor if he can find one. <laughs> I've had trouble with those people. I don't know what it is. It's like there's something wrong. I've, I've actually been in a hospital. They put me under the, 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 the stuff to put you under and find out they didn't have what they, or there wasn't, I wasn't ready for the surgery. So then they pull me out of it and say, you can go home now. Okay. Hallelujah. And I just walk home. Hallelujah. So like I said, he, he'll use doctors. If he can get a hold of the right one. And they'll be like, oh, I apologize. Yeah, yeah. Come back and I'll try again. No thanks. I'm good. Hallelujah. If you didn't make it right the first time, I got to go get another one. Hallelujah. My goodness. Well, how's that happen? You know, you go through the office, you go through your doctor, you go through the specialist, you go through the hospital, you go, and none of them said what needed to be said or do what I needed to be said. Nobody called in the prescription to get me prepped up for what I was about to go through. So then they said, go putting you under. I, I assume you took this. No, nobody gave it to me. What do you mean nobody gave it to you? Nobody called, nobody did. Well, it should be at Walgreens, I'll check. Nobody called it there. Hmm, hmm. Well, we better get him out there. You know I was never built for that? Well, I hope not. Hallelujah. Just got to put on a fancy gown, got a couple bracelets and a little bit of drugs. Hallelujah. And got sent home. Hallelujah. And I don't know about you, but sometimes in Litchfield, it just seeing me stagger down the road probably was a testimony to somebody. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably like, oh, I knew it was him. I knew he was off. I told you. Hallelujah. I told you. <laughs> I knew he'd finally slip up. There it is right there. Look at it. Probably went and had a Holy Ghost testimony right there. I saw that Bill Vincent. He was staggering down a side road because his wife thought he was going to be there for a couple hours. <laughs> I'm just having fun, but I had to get that out of my system. See, you cannot use your faith to get rid of something you believe God gave you. You cannot use your faith to get rid of something that God has given you. If God gave it to you, you can't say, oh, I find that to get off me, right? No, you can't. How many of you know if you go up against God, you lose? Come on, some of you have tried to go up against God. Come on! Come on, some of you might not have had it that way, but you, you tried to come against him in a bit. You're like, come on, God, what are you doing? Sometimes I think he just goes, Boop. what do you mean, what am I doing? See, Satan is not the finisher of your faith. <laughs> if trials and tests perfect your faith, Satan would be the finisher. I don't know about you, but I got saved today. Woo! Hebrews 12, 2 says this, and it declares that Jesus is the author and the finisher of your faith. Satan is not. Yeah, somebody's going to have to listen to this again. Here's, 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 I think this is my first point. I'm sorry about that. Here we go. God is not the tempter. Come on. And we all say, yeah, I know. And let me call your attention to something Jesus said when he was teaching disciples. He said this. After this manner, therefore, pray you. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. I know that seemed like a religious prayer right there, but there's something in there. Just stop and think about this. Is it God's will that we 
be tested and tried in heaven. Are you going to go to heaven and get tested some more? All right, all right. You're going to go to heaven and the testing and the trials are over. So let's back up and look at that just a little bit. Last part of that. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. See, in heaven there is no testing, no trials. See, in heaven that stuff is not there. We're supposed to get to a place here that those things are not going to affect us anymore. Here, I don't know about you, but some people are waiting to fly away. Oh, one day, hallelujah, we'll fly away. But guess what? I don't know about you, but I want to have heaven here before I go there. See, in Matthew 26, 41, Jesus said to his disciples, Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. Said, watch and pray. Come on, if you wear a three piece suit on Sunday morning, you cannot ever have temptation. That's what some people think. I preach from a pulpit, brother. See, if evidently, According to the scripture, this verse right here, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. I like to simplify scripture. That means you can avoid it. By watching and by praying. Most of the time, we get into trials and temptations by doing what Jesus said to avoid. I love that so much. It's like only part of it catches and she's like, what? <laughs> See, most of the time we get into trials and temptations by not doing what Jesus said to avoid. The word temptation in James 1, 2 counted all joy that when uh, you fall into diverse temptations and then in verse 13, let no man say that he is tempted for I am tempted of God. Listen, because it is the same word translated trial and test in other parts of the New Testament. So let's paraphrase this. I want to say it the way God told me to say it today. Let no man say that it is God doing the tempting or trying. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither will he tempt us. See, every good gift and perfect gift is from above, and it cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom no variableness, neither shadow of turning. James 1, 16 and 17. The word shadow here means, speaks of less light or darkness. And there is never any gradual turning from that, which is good and perfect. I hope you understand this at the end. Because God is not guilty of using evil or darkness to perfect you. He is not going to use evil to perfect you. Jesus will perfect you. He will not let the devil perfect you because the devil has gotten permission and he only got it from us. We allow Satan to perfect our faith when Jesus is the perfecter. So let's, cl let's conclude with this. This is a very long conclusion, so don't get too excited. That cookie will be still there when we get home. There's two forces at work. We all know that. There's always two forces. There's always two forces at work. The Father is the giver of all good. And Jesus said this, The thief cometh not but for the steal, to kill and destroy. I am come that you might have life. Thank God. 
that he came to bring life, not trials. That's a perverted thing. That's a lot of perverted thinking that God would bring me in trial. See, I, I just recently wrote the book about uh, heaven's courts. And I tell you, see, it's not... It's always the accuser of the brethren that takes us to court and is accusing us and trying to tear us down and trying to keep us from getting everything that belongs to us. But it's God who's on the throne and he's the judge and Jesus is defending us and standing beside us. The force of evil steals and destroys and kills. If you let him, Satan will steal your faith. He will kill your testimony. He will destroy your health. And he will do anything to destroy you. And when he destroys a mama and a daddy, he'll destroy the children too. If you let him. We have to stand for the children. We have to stand through it all. Sometimes it might be hard. Sometimes it might be tiring. And sometimes the children stand you up. See, the force of righteousness is from God who gave Jesus to provide life, life more abundantly. This force works for you. There's constantly life force working for you. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter how late it is. It doesn't matter if it looks like it's going to be late. It might not even come in the time zone that you think. Woo! The force working against you is in no wor way working for you. And I put in here, you can write that down. The force that is working against you, come on, it is never going to work for you. The opposing force is not working a good in you. Well, my trial, my tribulation I'm going through right now, it's making me bold. No, Jesus is making you bold. Come on. We get bold because of the outcome, because of the testimony. We get stronger because of the victory. We don't get stronger because of the battle. We don't have to go through the battle to get to the victory. Sometimes we can stand above the battle to where it doesn't even affect us. That's the kind of faith I'm talking about tonight. To have a battle, this a new battle of faith. We're not supposed to have the battle. Jesus overcame it so we wouldn't have to. Jesus said you could avoid some of those temptations by watching and praying. We forgot to watch and pray. We know how to watch TV. Come on. Come on, you hook up a Wi-Fi and a laptop and don't give them any rules at all and they'll watch and watch and watch and watch. See, if testing and trials would perfect your faith, I wonder why Jesus didn't know it. Come on, I'm trying to make this ignorant. Because if we get to the place to where it seems foolish, we won't ever allow it. But sometimes we allow Satan to manipulate us. God must be doing something. We must be waiting this long because God's up to something. He's doing. He's holding it back for some reason. He's not going to bless me yet because he does. He knows I'm going to blow it. <laughs> See, Jesus is the author of our faith. Now, if Jesus authored your faith. Don't you know that he doesn't have to try it to see if it will work? Come on. 
back many years ago when they made my van, they probably tested it out. They didn't just make it and pull it out and say, well, I hope it works. They tested it. They put their name on it. So they tested it out, made sure things worked. Now, of course, <laughs> there's always something that doesn't work, but that's all right. Come on, if you buy a car, how many know you just bought it for a while? Hallelujah. But things don't work sometimes. And, and, and all, all this building that vehicle, they sell it to someone and then try it out to see if it runs right. The faith from the author had already been tested before you got a hold of it. You didn't have to test it again. We didn't have to try it out. Come on, some of us had to have faith to start the vehicle sometimes. Come on, Jesus, let this not be the day. 100,000, 200,000 miles has reached, but I believe in the Holy Ghost. Oh, there it is. Hallelujah. We give you praise for another day. <laughs> See, your faith is his faith because he authored it. Got to slow it down, but I got to get it right. It has already been tried and proven. It works. He never did make any unworthy work and workmanship. We are his workmanship. He authored us. Come on. And our faith. Can I keep going? Whether you like it or not, I think I have to. Because I got this dropped in my spirit while I was saying that. Listen to this. Lack of the word equals lack of faith. Come on, if you don't have the word in you, you ain't going to have faith in you. How does faith come? Faith comes by. Hallelujah. I bet the janitor down the street and the church down the street probably would have got that. Hallelujah. See, a lack of faith is caused by a lack of the word. Christians have lack of faith because of the word. It abides. You've got to understand we need that abiding word. Yeah. If Satan comes along with us, <laughs> i got to say it. Come on. If Satan comes along with a smoke screen. I like this. Come on. And he says this. This is God trying and testing you. Most people will just melt and have a pity party. Most people will just go, why, Lord? That's why it hasn't come. The Bible says, neither give place to the devil. Like I said, some people have given him a space for rent. We've, allowed, we've invited him in saying, come on, what do you want to do to me today? What do you want to hang out? Do you want to mess me up? We give him permission. We, don't, we aren't supposed to give place to the devil. Many books have been written on self-pity and defeat. Don't Google it. It'll get you messed up. Titles will get you confused. You'll be like, maybe that's me. You'll be ordering books. Don't do it. Get delivered. <laughs> Many people fall under attack of Satan and say, it must be God perfecting me. Here's what God said about this. And he was not nice. He says, that's a cop out. That's a cop out. Why? Because it is easier to blame God than to admit that we fail to act on the word of God. 
Come on, it's a lot easier to say, well, God didn't do it than to say we didn't step up and walk out the word that we already know is true. I love sometimes we have this roller coaster of life. We go down, pity party. Oh, woe is me. And then we go back up and we're like, oh, I know he's going to come through. I don't think it's ever going to happen. Oh, hallelujah. I know it's going to be happening soon. Oh, I'm just going to give up. Come on, it's a roller coaster. We up, we down, we up, we down. Some of you that used to be married blamed the other guy or other woman. And now that they're not there, you don't have anybody to blame. Boy, it got quiet. See, your faith will fail. Your faith will fail to produce when you fall for Satan's lies. This is going to hurt a bit. I, I, don't, I don't know how much time I got, but I have to say this. I'm, God must be holding it in CD still tonight because I, I can't believe I'm getting this much out. Here's what God said to me. What you allow, what you allow, God will allow. Some of you are like, some of you are trying to protect you, yourself with a religion. I don't know if I've received that yet. Let's see what he says next. <laughs> see, when you feel one of those pity parties coming on and want to feel sorry for yourself, you can mark it down. Satan is on the case. As soon as you have your pity party, as soon as you start murmuring and crying and moaning and groaning, oh, I don't get nothing I want for breakfast. Oh, sorry, that was, that, that was a side note. I got it. Sorry. <clears throat> we'll get back in control. <laughs> Sometimes my personal life gets in the midst of that sermon. I, I didn't mean... Um, just keep saying in your head, big cookie, big cookie, big cookie. Okay. <laughs> Lord, forgive me. See, if he can get you to feel sorry for yourself, your reaction is, usually is, Oh, Lord, why did you allow this to happen to me? I don't know about you, but if I was God, and I heard you ask me why I let something happen to you when you're having a pity party. I would be a lot worse than God, just so you know. I'd be like, what? <laughs> Interrupt your programming on your TV and say, what are you complaining about? That's a foolish question. See, God will allow anything you allow. He'll let you rob a bank if you want to. He'll allow you to go to hell if you want to. Come on, I just, come on. Don't you wish we was at a Sunday morning church? be so wonderful, big church, a bunch of suits and a bunch of elders, the mic would be already shut off. He will let you go to hell. God will allow you to go to hell if you want to. You are foolish if you do either one, but God will allow it if you allow it. It's not his will, but he will allow it. Come on. 
The Bible says that Jesus came and died, that all would be saved and none would be lost. But God will still let you go to hell if you want to. Come on. Come on, a lot of people think they're sneaking around in church and doing things that God doesn't know. Come on. I love when people think they're keeping a secret from God. People in ministry, they think they've got a secret. Come on. They think they can just click out of that screen on the computer when somebody walks in the room and nobody knows. God doesn't have to search your history. (laughs) See, the Bible says that Jesus came and died. Listen to that. He came and died for you. But guess what? He'll allow you to do whatever you want. The decision is yours, not God's. God's not going to force you. You can hear and hear and hear the truth, but God will not force you. (laughs) <laughs> Amen. Mom will, but God won't. Come on. Come on. God might not do it, but mom will get you there. <laughs> First time you're at college asking for a bunch of money, be like, all right, have you asked Jesus in your heart lately? <laughs> Come on. Just... I was going to say I'm joking, but I don't know that I am, so let's move on. See, this is where we've missed it. Somebody said, God allowed it. Listen to this. So it must be his will if he allows it. Now, I know there's things that God allows, but you've got to understand, some of it we allow. That's why he allows it. See, it's a lie of Satan. Let's get into Adam and Eve for a moment. Adam and Eve sinned in the garden of Eden, but it wasn't God's will. It couldn't have been because God told Adam not to do it. See, the decision was Adam's. See, God allows sickness, but it's not his will. I hope you get what I'm about to say. This is complicated, but I know I got it today, so I hope you get it. Many banks are robbed every month, but we don't accuse the chief of police, the mayor, the governor of doing it. Or even allowing it. It happened during their administration, but it is misplaced blame to say that they allowed it. A criminal person made the decision to do it. See, the bank is responsible for having security, but you've got to understand that doesn't mean if they get robbed, they allowed it to happen. Come on, unless you're watching one of those cop shows on TV, then there's always somebody in the bank that allowed it. Mm-hmm. But let's move on. Religious thinking says God is to blame But God is against sickness, suffering of every kind. He is, (laughs) whoo, he's responsible of putting measures in place so that you won't be robbed, that you won't have this happen or that happen. But if you allow it to happen, you got to understand it's not for him to blame. See, we have a security system here at the church, but if we don't set it, Somebody listen to me. We're to put on the whole armor of God. Don't allow the enemy access to your home, to your business, to your body, to your children. The biggest blow, the biggest enemy to our faith is that the source is God. That he is the source of our problem. That is the biggest enemy. That that is something that Satan has got into some of the people in this room tonight. That God has done things in your life. Allowed things in your life. 
We need to repent tonight. We need to break it off tonight. True knowledge of God's word and understanding of Jesus' earthly ministry will reveal that God is a good, loving Father. Listen. And faith works by love. Faith works by love. I don't know about you, but there's, it's time for us to all rise up as giants tonight. Come on, against the giants of the land. The devil is a liar. Come on. He has been lying to you. He has been lying about your situation. He has gotten you to allow things to happen in your life so that whenever it's, there's a law in place. I want to say this real quick. There is a law in place that God has set in our nation, in our world, in the entire universe. And certain things are all set in order, and God will never go against the law he has set. If you allow Satan to do things, God will allow it. Why? Because that's the law. But when you stand against Satan, Satan has to retreat. Why? Because that's the law. He will always back up the law. And whether you like it or not, we have been bound up by believing the devil, and we need to break it off tonight. Why? Because the law says so. And when we line up to the law, the devil's going to be defeated in every area in Jesus' name. Healings are going to happen. Deliverance is going to happen. Finances are going to break through. And it's all going to start happening and popping. Why? Because the devil is a liar. And just so you know, sometimes, no, all the time, if he's doing things to lie to you, to hinder you, to cause you to doubt and to get defeated and hurt your faith, it's because you're close to something. Wow. Satan is not in the bar right now tempting that guy to drink a beer. Why? Because his dollars are probably a lot more than dollars now. But, you know, his money's on the bar. He's already thinking of that next drink. He is not remotely tempted to drink because he's already given way to it. We live in a place right now, a lot of our problems have been, to, have been between us and our relationship with God and his word. We clean that all up. We can get an attitude of faith. And I do mean an attitude. Why? Because good faith has an attitude. Because no matter which way the children go, you have an attitude. Raise up the way a child should go and they will not depart from it. You have a standard in you, and you believe it. Your body starts to hurt. You say, oh, no, I'm healed by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. You go through a battle, and there's a delay for finances and a breakthrough that has been promised to you. No matter what it is, that delay doesn't mean it's done, that it's already hindered forever. That delay means the enemy is trying to get you to be focused on the natural when the supernatural can bring it right now just in a moment. A lot of times, God can do something so quick and easy. And sometimes I have to tell him that. And don't get me wrong. I've had my own little battles. I've had my own storms. I've had my own little pity parties. Come on, I remind God. Remember you said. <laughs> Why? Why would you give us this if it's going to be empty? Why would you do this if we're going to have to battle this? And sometimes your children have a faith level that blows your mind. You're like, man, I might have to rent a car if we go over here. They're like, well, why don't you just buy a car? <laughs> oh, okay. Why don't we just buy a car? See, adults understand. Teenagers are still thinking, I, I'm waiting for the reason. Why won't you go just buy a car? Well. 
And I'd like to just be able to walk that out. And I've had times where I walk out things like this, and it's what I call crazy faith. You're in a level that it doesn't matter what's going on around you. It doesn't matter what your checkbook says, your, your credit says. doesn't matter what anybody says. Come on. Whenever I walked in and I got the van that we're driving today 200,000 miles ago, hallelujah. But when I got the van, praise God, I just walked to the dealer and said, I'm supposed to get a van, our vehicle. They're like, they, they ran things and got things going. And at the time, there was no way, no way it should have happened. No way I should have walked out of that. And I went in with no money, absolutely no money. I walked out with a van, hallelujah. And it was, come on, you got to understand, whenever God brings you to that level, it's a level that you've never been before. Come on. I mean, when you go in there and you're just thinking, man, they're just going to tell me to laugh at me and kick me out of here. And then all of a sudden they're like, which one of those three do you want? What do you mean, which one? <laughs> See, I want you to understand that there's something about to happen. And that's why the dirty devil's been trying to hinder us. Because the enemy of faith, that's what it is, just the enemy of faith. A lot of us have been distracted. But that devil's going to stop tonight. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God said this not too long ago. Is there anything too hard for me? No. Yeah, we all agree. No. But in the situation sometimes. Come on, when you're dragging your leg behind you. It's like, come on, I know he can do it. I really do. Come on. Come on, when you're, when you're walking and you're like, oh, yeah. I really believe he can do it. It doesn't mean you don't. My, I, I got to say this because I know it affects a lot of you. It's not about whether God can do things. Sometimes it's about when is he going to do it. You know, if he, I can go, the, I can go, I, come on, I don't even have to eat for a week if I know the breakthrough is in eight days. Come on. Come on, if you know something's coming, you just feed the kids and get through it. But when he says soon, that's when the devil comes in and tries to get you all doubting and giving up and throwing a fit because that soon could be a year. Or longer for some of us. But tonight, we're supposed to be rising above to where every time the piercing darts come at us, we're just going to pivot doesn't matter what he throws at you. Your faith is going to stand strong through it all. Why? Because you're going to become unmovable. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus. Okay. Some of you need to pray this with me. You all should pray this with me, but I say some of you should be praying this with me. In the name of Jesus, I repent of anything that has given Satan power in my faith and anything of my belief in the Word of God and the deity of God and everything in Jesus' name. We break off everything that is not of God. Every false thought, false doctrine, whatever it is, we break it off tonight. Raise us up, God. In Jesus' name, the perfecter and author of our faith. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, that there's no more power going to be given over to Satan.
that we're going to be released to things tonight like we've never been released before in Jesus' name. There's victories. I see a lot of small victories and big victories that are going to take place just because of tonight. Just because of tonight. And I'm not trying to toot my own horn because of the revelation and because of the word of God. But I'm just saying there's something going to be so broke through tonight that it's going to change the very lifestyle of our way of living. That we're going to see breakthroughs, increases, and all those things that have set us back are no longer going to be setbacks, but they're going to be setups in Jesus' name. Woo! We're not going to be set back. We're going to have setups in Jesus' name. Not the kind that makes your abs hurt. Woo! But setups. Hallelujah. We're going to get a different kind of setups. Hallelujah. We're going to be set up by God. Favor of God. Open doors. Open doors. Come on. Government of favor. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Do I say that? I don't know if we have any time on a CD, and it doesn't matter if I do. I do have to say this because I don't know what we're going to do in a minute. <clears throat> Some of you that have been battling financially, you try to do all you can do to figure out something. And when you need finances, that's when every loan thing gets sent to you in the mail, on TV. Somehow they text your phone too. I don't know how in the world they're doing that. I got a text the other day. It says, you need money. Contact me. Like, I don't even know who you are. Hallelujah. But I saw by the Spirit of God a treasure chest open, and I said, God, what's going on? And I like to have hypotheticals sometimes. Like whenever I talk to the children or preach, sometimes I'll say, hypothetically, what if this happened? So here's what God said to me. He said, hypothetically, if I gave you a month of $400 a day, some of you might, your calculator's already ran, and you're like, oh, that's nice. Now, I understand if God's saying this, you don't have to figure it out. I'm not saying that God's doing something like this exact, exact amount. But he said, how would that work out for you? First thing that happened in my thought was, why has it got to stop after a month? Come on, if we get to that level, let's just continue. Hallelujah. Come on, hey, come on, can we roll it over? Come on, can we compound it? Can we, you know, I don't know. You know, can we take it, give 10%, 20%, and roll it again? Hallelujah. And I'm not gambling, this is just in God. Hallelujah. And, he, and here's what God said, that's fine. So sometimes when God speaks like that, I just get kind of confused. I'm like, is this an offer? Are you offering me something? Did I just get a job that I don't know about in the spirit realm? When does it start? Tomorrow? Now some of you are looking at me funny, but I'm saying, I serve a supernatural God. He's not limited to anything. He could bless the business. He could bless the ministry. He could bless me somehow without a loan, by the way. And he said, there's been so many lies to you. Things that have been spoken that promises to you. This is to me and I... And I believe there's things going to happen in people here because of what God said to me. And he said, all those promises of people that have said, I'm going to do this. God told me to do this. I'm going to do this. The blessings are going to come. I want to pay this. I want to take care of this. He said, if I combine them all and roll them out, that's about what it equals right now. 
about $400 a day, as it is. And he said, it's time for restitution. Now, my natural man gets confused because I'm already trying to figure it out. You know, which bank, where are we put, you know, what are we gonna do? Should we reinvest some things, put some stuff in a CD? I mean, where are we going? I'm already thick of the head. He hasn't even got. Ha, 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 ha. And then, here, I, know, I know we're not putting in a CD. I mean, I could tell you stories, but we won't go there. But it's like we've had a devil, a target on us. Some of you have had a target on you. And that devil is a liar, and the target is being removed. And what was meant for destruction is going to be turned around. And when it gets turned around, it gets multiplied back. It gets increased back to you. And it's going to roll over to you. Just a couple of weeks ago, I don't care how many people are here, God's been saying over the last several t meetings we've had that the spirit of revival is starting to blossom in this place. I can feel the revival in me so I know it's already here. It might not be in the masses and miracles and healings, but the healings and miracles are going to begin to manifest even tonight. But I really believe that there's something that when it starts happening your finances get revived, your health gets revived, everything gets revived. And that's what I believe God is doing right now. And don't get me wrong, I've expected things to happen for a long, long time. And it's not foolish. And I don't want to be like some of these mega ministers that have a bunch of planes and all that stuff when the gospel's not being preached enough. Come on, I, I don't want that kind of stuff. Come on. We could use some repairs around here, but I want you to understand, I don't care what the building looks like as long as it can fill, hallelujah, and we can draw them in, people get set free, people get healed, people get delivered. And I want you to understand that we need to understand there's a balance coming, but there's also increase that is coming. And it's not because of my desire, it's because of his. But I want you to understand if God says something to you, just like if I said something to her, hi, let's say hypothetically, knows that she knows there's a hidden secret in there. I'm not just saying hypothetical. I don't just say hypothetically, what if? She already knows there's something behind it. So God's not just setting me up for another fail. Come on. He's not that type of God. He's not the tester. And I don't know about you, but for a lot of people in this room, it's about time. It's about time. Now, I'm, I'm in the prophetic realm seeing some things, but I want you to hear this. There's been a lot of people that have come and gone in the ministry and all kinds of different things. And God said many times they couldn't have handled it, what God was going to do. That's why they fell away. I want you to understand there's a lot of reasons why God has held us for such a time as this. And I don't know why sometimes God does what he does, but I know he's up to something. No matter what mess you go through, no matter how many distractions, there's always been this knowing inside of me. Something is going to happen. It might not be. I mean, I've had a lot of those times where I don't know when it's going to happen. And every lie of the devil, the devil's been trying to tear down physically, emotionally, all kinds of sidetracks, going after the children, going after the schools, the shooting in all the schools. Come on now. We need God to hit America. So I want to take a moment before I, I, I don't know exactly what I'm doing. I believe I'm going to minister a little bit. But I want to take a moment to do the offering. Whether you know it or not, there's something about 
revival and offering that's going to take place in the days ahead. That's going to cause people to be seeing a lot more return than they ever dreamed. We had a revival, I believe it was around 2011 or 12, in Belleville, Illinois. And it was just unreal how God would just bless. And we had to drive all the way to Belleville, and all the way back, all the way, every, every service. And, and, but it was just like God just blessed. I mean, people would see you at the gas pump and want to fill your tank type of thing. When we would have meetings and go places. And it was just, I'm telling you, there's just something about the blessings of God that come in this type of atmosphere that I'm sensing tonight. And again, I'm not going by what I see here. I'm going by what I feel right here. And I feel something strong, tangible that I haven't felt except for the past several weeks. And I believe there's something about to happen. And one of the realms is financial. Come on, I'm not just taking an offering tonight. We have needs of the ministry, but God bless you. You have needs that God's going to bless. And I want you to understand, your seeds are not going to go without fruit. In Jesus' name. So right now, in the name of Jesus, we call forth for the spirit of revival to hit the financial realm of every person in Jesus' name. That as they give tonight, they shall be blessed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, help me help these people not to try to figure you out when it comes to what you're going to do. Because sometimes if we try to figure it out, we'll mess it up. God, anoint us to figure it out. Not just us figure it out. Not us try to help you out. But just let it happen. Anointed in Jesus' name. Lord, we just give you praise in Jesus' name. If you need an envelope, raise up your hand. McKenna will bring you one. Try to stay in this attitude. Try to stay in this attitude of worship. Lift up your hand where she can see it. If you make out checks, make them out to revival ways of glory. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for waves of your glory. Not just a wave, but waves. Hallelujah. Let all your waves wash over me in Jesus' name. At the noise of your waterfall. <laughs> 